In today's episode, you could win Carrion Empire, which is... Ben, help me here. It's 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 Vampire Counts versus Skaven for Age of Sigmar. But what's the new name for these dudes? It's the Flesh Eater Court versus Skaven for Age of Sigmar. It's the new set that they've put out, their new battle box. So you can go and pick that up. And uh, yeah, hopefully you'll win it as part of the comments in this uh, in this episode. So if eating flesh is your thing, you've come to the right show. Hello and welcome to The Weekender. Right, so to be in with a chance of winning that prize, remember all you have to do is comment below, be a subscriber to uh, to the channel and make sure you ding my damn dong because YouTube has now uh, shadow banned the channel. It, it is basically shadow banned the channel. So what, what, it, the only way you find out what we're doing is by dinging my dong. You don't need to ding it repeatedly, by the way. Ding it the once, I'm fine with that. If everybody could try liking the show this week, it mo just to see if it has any impact whatsoever on the algorithm, <laughs> I don't think it does. Uh, in which case, if it has no impact this week, I'm just going to stop asking you to do it because it's pointless wasting my breath. <laughs> Absolutely pointless wasting my breath. And then as regards sharing it, I think we should do it the old-fashioned way. Jerry, there was a great video on YouTube <laughs> made by them idiots over at Beasts of War. You should go and check it out. That sounds like a great idea. There. That's Wait. that's a role play of mm. all you have to do to share it. Because Wait, you, again, you want them to talk yes, to people. Let's let's just talk to folks. We see all this social network crap. I I, I regret ever, It'll ever never catch laying on. eyes on it. Don't worry about it. Yeah, so it's a fad. Let's, let's just fad. go back to just talking to folk and you know, write the URL down in a letter and send it to someone. I don't know what you're complaining about. It's great sitting on your phone at four o'clock in the morning looking at what's the next bit of crap that's going to come up. What's the next bit? <laughs> dude, dude. <laughs> <do you> know, <laughs> Lloyd, Lloyd literally stalks my feed. <laughs> yeah. He best. will be sitting there waiting. For, for like one in the morning, <laughs> two in the morning, whenever I see something random and funny, I go, oh, that's random and funny. Dink. Justin's, and Lloyd's just sitting there going, <laughs> Justin's my Facebook feeder. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have found myself, um, uh, I have insomnia these days. So I, I find that I have went back to the medieval and dark age way of sleeping, mm -hmm. where I will sleep um, uh, the first part of the night, okay? Mm -hmm. And then... I'm awake for a large number of hours <laughs> through the night before going back to sleep again, okay? This is this is apparently how our recent ancestors, I'm going way back, actually slept. They had those waking hours in the middle of the night where they were making love, Justin. Mm -hmm. But Andrea doesn't, doesn't wake up, so I don't get any of that. <laughs> uh, I get YouTube, okay? Oh, fair enough. <laughs> so I have found myself in the middle of the night. I, I'm, I've become addicted to two types of YouTube content, okay? Mm. One is lathes. I have a thing for lathes. Oh, you like the word? Dude, metal lathes. I, I, I have been watching these guys making rings mm -hmm. out of meteorites, yep. okay? Uh, more on meteorites tomorrow in XLBS, by the way. Justin, yeah. I've got something very important to discuss with you in the morning, okay? okay? Really important. Do, do I need to brace myself? Life or death. You, the whole planet needs to brace ourselves. Okay. Life and death stuff, guys. If you care about your future existence, come over, pay three seventy nine a month to join backstage <laughs> and watch XLBS. Sell tactics. Buy merch. But so I've 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 gone down this kind of rabbit hole mm -hmm. of of what thing of things that people can do on lathes, right? Yeah. And then you could say you went down a warren. I did a rabbit, oh. <laughs> <rather> oh. <laughs> of, of crafting goodness, mm. and then I okay. found the darkest part of the internet. Right, and I don't think you can talk about that. I love it. I am absolutely hooked. I have found a community of matchbox and hot wheels restorers. Oh, that's awesome! <laughs> oh, and right. the, it is. 
Wow. Unreal! It is so good. My little boys are into their uh, into their Hot Wheels. They're always <laughs> talking about oh Hot Wheels, Hot Wheels. Mm -hmm. I've never much been into it. We we we, we have some games and mm. stuff um, uh, yeah, in our in our industry that use them, yeah, but I've never been that big into mm. it. And then up came this icon of a Hot Wheel uh, car, and it was in dire nick. Yeah, I talked yeah. about restoration. I thought to myself. Oh, it's interesting. I'll watch it. I, I have watched dozens of these since. I am absolutely addicted. I love it. I absolutely love it so much so that I'm going to I'm going to challenge John. Okay, uh, myself and John are going to do a restoration, but we're going to do it wargamer style. So we're going to take all of our experience that we've had um, as uh, miniature hobbyists. Yeah. Yeah. And we're gonna we're gonna take our take on either a restoration or a customization, a custom on a, a diecast model car, on a, on a Matchbox or a Hot Wheels, right. uh, just as a just as a way to feed a big thank you into that community because they do some weird stuff that I look at and I go, <laughs> I wouldn't do it that way. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so what? So maybe they'll pick up something from the way we do it. I know I'm certainly picking up something. From the way they're doing it, if I could zinc plate miniatures, I would be totally into that. But it has been great. I've yeah. really enjoyed it. I, I wonder I, if they look at things like Gaslands and the like that come out, where it's all about getting Hot Wheels cars and smashing them up and adding guns and stuff. And does it annoy them in the same way that things like Star Wars really annoyed gun collectors? Because it's very difficult to find mm. things like the bull pup blaster, you know, the, the gun that they make Solo's blaster. Yeah, everybody and turns it into Solo's people, blaster. People yeah. kept buying them and then turn them into, and they're gun collectors are raging because these things that should be, you know, preserved and restored and, yeah. and all of a sudden they become they're getting cut up. They're getting cut up <laughs> by, by nerds to put bean tins on front yeah. of friends and stuff. I don't or, think they would because there's because uh, there's one of these channels and he's into his Mad Max. Oh, so he oh, does so these, he's always doing he things does like these this. conversions um, of um, of new new and old uh, yeah. Hot Wheels. Yeah, because these are not collectibles, they're doing it. Well, uh, there's, I don't know there's, he, if you got the right well, one. <laughs> I didn't realise that there was there was a, a, a there is a real collectability to these. Mm. Some of these little cars, Lloyd, um, in mint condition, go for two three grand. But right? are we talking about dinky cars? Or are we talking dinky cars? Yeah, dinky. yeah, we're talking like these. Yes, yes. Yeah, Matchbox and uh, yeah. well, does, that's a does, red line. Do Matchbox have yeah. ones that are rare enough to go for that uh -huh. sort of money too? Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. That, it but, depends on the age. No, this this is right. So I, I've got I can actually teach you something here, right? This is called a red line, okay? And red line is a specific uh, type of vintage um, Hot Wheels. It was made by Mattel back in the 60s, okay? And they were the first kind of Hot Wheels that would come out. And the reason they're called LED red lines is because if you notice there on the tire, oh, the red there's wall. a red line yeah. around the tire. Right. So these red lines are really, really collectible, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, so what happens is you've got you, you get obviously different grades of red line. There's entire little e-commerce stores that are purely built on selling you stuff to uh, fix up your red so, line. So where they somebody's sell, accidentally they sell the crashed a couple of I cars God, and they, they sell just cut the decals, wheels off. And... They've uh, the the Spectra color paint, right? Yeah. So this paint, okay, uh, this is a kind of like a slightly opaque. Um, shiny uh, paint with a slight metallic yeah. uh, uh, effect through it, mm. and this paint goes right down on top of the metal direct directly, minus primer, mm. and that's what, how you got the, you got that effect. I am learning so much from this. It is I, it is so cool. I actually have a, a TV show for you then. Yeah, it's called Car Masters Rust to Riches, where they actually take and make that car mm -hmm. in one to one scale. I'm not interested. Really? You, no, you, don't, not interested. you don't want to see someone take a Hot Wheels car and make it an actual car? No. Do you want to know okay. why? Because Because I'd never get to do that. <laughs> Whereas I love watching these guys with their dinky cars, because I look at it and I go, I want to have a go at that. Why do I get the feeling can, you're just going to be trolling around all the, the car boots in the local area? I am absolutely <laughs> going to be trolling. I have why, now why got a new thing on my list 
to watch out for when I go to the car boot sales. There you go. And that's red lines. <laughs> I'm going to try and see if I can find some red lines. But uh, seriously, I think we should have a meeting of minds, mm -hmm. okay? A, you might call this a cross-pollination mm. or a cross-fertilization, Justin, uh -huh. between our niche groups. So if you are some of those guys that are out there who are doing this wonderful stuff that I'm addicted to in the middle of the night when really I should be making love if I was born 600 years ago, I want to hear from you because I want to cross fertilize with you deeply. So you want them to show you their dinkies. Yes, so and then I get, will show them mine. So you can get all excited about it. Yes, I'm going to get all excited about it. Apparently the light. pink ones are worth more. Nice. Yep. There's another one for you. Rarest color. Anyway, what I intend to do is myself and John are we're gonna we're gonna do our take on a custom and use all, all of our experience in, in our miniature painting and stuff. And we do think that the, the guys in that in, in that niche will, uh, will maybe will pick up a thing or two, okay? But as well as that, I would like to talk to you guys because we I want to show you some of the games that we have that you can play with those things because they still love playing with them. These are guys are hobbyists like us. Mm -hmm. But instead of miniatures, they play with miniatures. Yeah. But little dinky roly miniatures. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I just want to say thank you for making my nights of insomnia bearable. <laughs> we need a lot of wee tiny LCD screens and, mm. and sound systems now. And if anybody's looking for a home <laughs> for a lathe, Hit me up. Hit me up. I, I would love. Uh, a, I would Warren, love a well, lathe. I, I, I wouldn't let you near a lathe. But we if, could. Do you know what? If, my, if the if the entire community wanted to band together and get me something really nice, okay. But we could lathe. make a rudimentary lathe. <laughs> <laughs> no, Warren. Warren, just, there's a thing here. So using a lathe can go very wrong. Yes. There's a video online of a fella who's turning a a See big this. lump of wood. Yes. And he's working it and working it and working it, and he hasn't attached it right. And I've I think you this. wouldn't attach it right. This thing kicks out, and I'm talking about something the size of your head, kicking out and planting him in the face. Do you know why I've seen Did this? Did he die? Because you're tro trolling my Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't die, but didn't I'm die. sure that would bloody well hurt. He's probably got broken nose and two black eyes. Yes. Well, I don't intend to be doing uh, big, no. heavy pieces of wood. I'm going to make rings okay out of meteorites okay where are you and getting your meteorites i don't know yet just a little bit they're very they're very you, common you, you need to source Details. these things oh, i would go i'm common. gonna i do you know what if i could go i could go down to the causeway and chip off parts of the giant causeway <laughs> that um, would work too yeah and make rings <gasps> causeway rings causeway yeah. rings oh uh, you're gonna get arrested I've, i have a friend has a and i could sell has them has on a, the ring rash road a table <laughs> that's actually a causeway pillar is it yeah how do you get it him and the bunch of his mates went up there years ago before the visitor center and heaped it in the back of a van you're not allowed to take away rock from the causeway because it's a protected world heritage site it's this big he's got a desk lamp on it it's good it <laughs> well there you go huge column. there you go no, uh, just to, put your, you're to fine. put your mind at ease uh, okay um i was actually trained in how to use a lathe when i was younger um i, 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 have, I don't trust this. believe me i actually have qualifications in mechanical engineering and electrical and electronic engineering. And you know how I, I know you know this? It's because I soldered again this week. Oh, that for the first time in 20 years. Nice. <laughs> painful to watch. Nice. It wasn't painful to watch. For it me, was, it was. It was only painful when I was testing if it was hot so, on you. So, you, so you're qualified <laughs> in this. Like that yes. time you wired a plug backwards and then reached out to save me while you were being electrocuted. Yeah, I forgot about that. Electrical <laughs> 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 engineer. This is why we don't have heavy equipment mm. in the office. Or yeah. if there's any power tools, I'm the one that's using them. Exactly. Under my, under my strict supervision. Yeah. This is right. Oh, back, Lloyd, back! <laughs> Stand back, Lloyd! <laughs> uh, I hope you never get teasered. Right. Um, updates. Yes. Okay, uh, later in the show, we've got an interview with the, the UK Games Expo team. Yes. Um, because UK Games Expo is now up, fired mm. up, and, and tickets and stuff are going. I have a little bit of trivia for you at the moment. Um, I don't know if there's any evidence for it, but apparently it is scientific fact that at UK Games Expo this year, they're putting on the biggest selection of role-playing and LARP events at any event in Europe. Yeah, well, they, they are going to be running a 100-player game of D&D. &D. 100 players all running in the same sort of instance. 
Very cool. How on earth do you do that? I have no idea, but I want to find out. With great skill and patience. <laughs> and many, many GMs. Oh. Yeah. But how do those GMs, like, uh, you know, those GMs, they must do, like, some sort of Spock, like, mind meld or something? I, I don't know. There has to be some form of way for them to interact between tables. That yeah. just seems like madness. That, that seems like car crash television right there. Get a camera yeah. on that. I have a so solution. So it's going to be a whole GM crop we're talking about? <laughs> I have a solution, but it would only work in Beasts of Warland. Right. Yes. The only possible scenario... Yeah. Based on all my years of experience of fantasy, okay, uh -huh. such as Conan and mm. Red Sonja and, and stuff like that, there right. is a I, wizard gonna do it. What is it gonna be a wizard? Did if it? you're gonna no, if you're gonna have a hundred people, it would have to be a mass dungeon orgy. Uh, I, I think it's the only thing that I can truly imagine that nobody could get wrong. Yeah, you just you just couldn't get that Plus wrong. Plus, the costumes is easy. Everybody yeah. plays cool balls, loincloths, loincloths, as far as the eye can see. And you rolling up your character will be fun. <coughs> so this cloth, this cloth here, two yep. strings, this cloth back there. Yes, loin cloth. This, this is just role playing. This is not marping. marping. <laughs> no, you want to use like a chamois Lied, leather. Lied, I mean, like a drying one. You've walked no, into the wrong room. Leather. Larpers are in the other one. <laughs> oh. Oh, no, I think I think for I think for full effect. Yeah. I have no idea how they're going to do it, but uh, but if yeah. if do you know what? If in the future you want a large one hundred player mm. beast of war yeah. dungeon orgy. Justin will organize that. Nice. As soon well, as he well, finishes well, the well, emu war. Yes, I as soon as we finish the emu war. insured for any of this. Um, there's tickets on sale at the moment then, yes? Yes, so for the, the RPG and the LARP. Uh-huh. Well done, Justin. What, what's going on here? Yeah, so you've got the, the tickets are up for sale for RPGs and LARPs. And yep. uh, one thing I was chatting to the guys about is they're constantly adding new events. So... What you're seeing there at the minute is not the final rundown of what's there. So it's, it's more of the gonna grow. penultimate countdown of, of what is there, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> it's not the final countdown. Okay, right, okay. <laughs> so they're more of a grower than a shower at the minute. Yes, <laughs> yes right, okay. Yes. Yeah. But uh, I'm looking forward to, to some of the stuff. Actually, they're doing Starship Bridge Simulator again this year. Uh huh. And they're doing upgrades so that it's all got touchscreens in it now. Oh! Yeah! It's getting more Star trek -y all the time. Yeah, although I, I will say, if that's one you're wanting to do, book in early. Do you know yes, what they absolutely. need? They need to have like some uniforms that you can rent. Oh, just I, wear your own. Actually, they, they did <laughs> have a guy right. last year who went in in a Star Trek uniform, but he had to be an admiral. No, he went in in a not Star Trek uniform. Okay. <laughs> I'm completely lost. Anyway, stay tuned to later in the show. We've got a whole lot of stuff coming up uh, where we're going to talk a bit about the, the UK Games yeah, yeah. Expo. Right, this month is Recruit a Gamer Month, or as we have now christened it, Snag an Army. So um, the whole prospect of, uh, of February mm -hmm. is that we want to introduce a non-gamer. Uh, so in other words, it's not the entire gaming community ganging up on one non-gamer. We, 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 <laughs> we all do one each. Right, mm -hmm. and uh, we want to try and bring him in uh, to gaming, and uh, uh, what we're going to be doing is is kind of feeding back to you guys for some stories. Well, we have our first of our stories. Yes. Ooh. Okay. So uh, by Bloodbeard's Garage, mm -hmm. um, this is. You right oh, there, Ben? They've they've come for you, Ben. If they found they've me. discovered <laughs> they've discovered your basement. Yeah, that's the basement. <laughs> fill the hole. Fill the hole. Don't worry about the screams. The dirt will muffle it. <laughs> so this is uh, uh, Soren Emil Rosenhage Bay. That's not his name, but that's as close as I can say it. Um, username on the Beast of War. This is Bloodbeard, okay? And he has created a massive participation game mm -hmm. uh, that he's running in uh, at his school, huh? where cool. the kids uh, take control of different factions uh, from the ancient world after the assassination of Caesar. So what he's basically created, Justin, mm -hmm. is Roman Risk. Roman Risk. Bring it up, Ben. What do we know about it? Uh, yeah, so this is something that he set up with the kids at his school. He'd previously done a project where he was looking at actually building like a, a space-based campaign that I think we talked about on a previous weekend. Uh, but this one, as you, say, as you say, is set after the assassination of Caesar, of Julius Caesar, and it's all about sort of like the civil war that broke out during that period. So it's really focusing down on sort of like what the kids can do. They can go to workshops where they earn points and things like that. And then they can use them to spend on the map to move around their units and take over certain areas of the board oh. and strategize and work together as a team and things. Okay. So this is basically like playing a massive game of risk 
in an entire school and he says there's a lot of shouting and there's a lot of uh, people you know stabbing each other in the back and all that kind of thing as happened in uh, ancient rome and uh, yeah it looks absolutely fantastic from what he's shown us so far in his blog and he's going to be continuing to add this uh, as the sort of weeks go by so if you like the look of this make sure to follow along with that and, and see where it goes so absolutely i quite um, like the idea that the the kids aren't just being given minis and said here go play they actually have to do something before they get the troops on the table yes. yeah yeah so they, they take workshops in roman history gladiator food uh drawings of roman buildings mosaics and maths and all that kind of thing and then uh, because of the sort of impetus that they do in those and sort of how they perform in those they get given a certain amount of denarii that they can spend in their games when they sit down to play this massive huge game of roman risk where they're moving around their units and all kinds of things and he has actually painted some of the miniatures too which is very cool so and we get another answer to what have the romans ever done for us <laughs> they've assisted us with snag an army month this is awesome. <clears throat> Although I do like the idea that you were positing earlier that it's one normie that we all look for in yes. some sort of running man style. <laughs> we, just, we just pick somebody randomly through, you know, the internet. We just, is he you know, named Norman? We just, you know, we just spin the internet. Are we hunting Norman? And then we just try and find this poor bugger wherever they are in the yeah, world. It would, it, would be, it would be the ultimate hunt. You know, maybe, maybe, Speaking maybe, of it. maybe next year we'll do that. Maybe we'll change it from <laughs> a, a million gamers getting a million normies to a million gamers. Well, <laughs> two million gamers at that point. Trying to find one, one normie. One very particular. <laughs> Speaking of Normans, we could do that with your 15 mil stuff that mm. you're going to be talking about in hobby time. Yes, oh, good. So good. Definitely See, I, good. I think that's like a 15 mil... They, 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 got they look like uh, 170 seconds sort of airfix ones. Oh, they like so, a plastic yeah. job. Yeah. So, so around um, 20 mil then? Yeah, yeah. so they're 20 mil. Oh, yeah, they're, yeah, they're definitely 20 mil because I think I have most of those at home. But uh, this Still is on the sprues, mind you, but you know, mm. have them. But we've been talking about um, uh, over the last couple of weeks about mm. recruitment and yeah. getting uh, getting other people into it, and you know, um, one of the specific things we were talking about in uh, XLBS, not last XLBS, but the XLBS before, before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we were talking about, you know, how do you pull that recruitment stage to the its earliest possibility yeah. into schools? Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, uh, one of the other things that we that we dis feedback that we got is that tanks, Gale mm. Force Nine's tanks game, mm -hmm. is actually going down really well in schools. Mm -hmm. That's so, cool. um, yeah. and that is cool, and I really like. Um, uh, what Bloodbeard has done here, because yeah. I certainly whenever I was at school many years ago, I remember we did the yeah. Romans. <laughs> the Romans were part of what we did. Yeah. Do you remember what you did in history at, at school? Uh, we covered the Romans. We covered World War Two. We spent a lot of time on the Battle of uh, Bastogne, which was a lot of fun. Yes. So I mean, like if if that's yeah, tanks what, what, what's, what's the Battle of Bastogne? It's World War Two. Bastogne was Battle of the Bulge. Sorry, is the one. Battle ba of the ba Bulge. Yeah, Bastogne was the the French village where Germany made a final push to try and go through the Ardennes again. Yeah, we also did the potato famine, but it doesn't make much. Of a yeah, game. no. no, like, no. <laughs> like, no un unless you're flinging flamboyant potatoes at each other, no. Yeah, I, I remember doing a lot of Romans whenever I was young as well. Yeah, we, Romans is the thing you do in like primary schools. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. and then but, 1066 comes up. And then when you go to high school, I don't remember a single thing of history from high school because we're all boring by the time you got to high school. It was all just a bad teacher. That's tragic, really. It so was I do like, really, it is. Isn't <laughs> it? I do like how the, he's mixing the participation of what they're doing mm -hmm. so into it's, their curriculum. So it's not you're playing a game. You've got the engagement that to get the models for your game, you've got to do, go and do the bits and pieces of the coursework. Raise your army. Yeah, and if, you've got to raise your army. And even if it means, I mean, well, some of them have to have gladiator food, which is terrible. Because if, if you're not aware, gladiators were vegetarians. Really? They were called barley eaters. Oh. So that's forcing kids away from me. That's how I know you, you cover this your ears like Ben, but this is you, not a Justin. Thing. No. Uh -huh. no, this is... You would never meet <laughs> it as a gladiator. You would no, no, I, I, no, I, with the lions, maybe as you know, I, filler. I, I, I don't know. I, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd probably be one of those, you know, you're, you're sentenced to die, ad gladium. Goodbye. No, yeah, yeah. But the but the idea that, you know, it's not do you want to play a game and then some kids go, oh, I don't want to play a game. How it's, is it even it's the back and forth? Forget all that. I don't care about that. Yeah, I love that. Well That's no 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 I don't care about any I love of that. It. <laughs> I wanna know how is it possible that gladiators didn't eat meat? But, uh, they had a very how, healthy diet, <clears> but just not Where did they get their protein meat? from? Each other. <laughs> <laughs> They, they well, sometimes have, eat, have, you, have you watched they, Spartacus? They sometimes eat snails <clears throat> and shellfish. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they got fed well because a gladiator yeah. was a very expensive oh, piece yeah. of meat. Yeah. 
Yes. You know, you wanted to keep them alive. Rarely did gladiators actually kill each other. Yeah, yes, they no. did kill each other. But you don't want to send your like 6,000 denarii dude no. out there mm-hmm. to just have them run through. And you're like, oh, that guy cost me like 6,000 denarii. Yeah. yeah, but here's the thing. They're not 10 a penny. To coin a phrase. Uh-huh. <laughs> right? If you run in and you were up against the elephants and the bears and the lions and the tigers, right? right. Oh, my. Yeah. You, surely you'd get to eat them if you killed them. Mm. Well, yeah, I've no idea. I, 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 you would have thought there'd have been a steady flow of meat. I like it's not know. like they were up like, against emus and had no chance no whatsoever. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's a, yeah. <laughs> or the cassowary. <laughs> or the cassowary. Anyway, look, a, yeah. a massive shout out to Bloodbeard. Thank you so much for sharing that. Great idea. Please do keep your stories uh, coming in on how you're going to snag an army this month. Um, we need to know. The, uh, who they are, what their relationship <laughs> to you is, their address and social security. No, I mean, just how you get them into gaming. We right, want to so, uh, get non right, so the, There's a tiny little gaming. card that's held in their wallet, got like a 13 digit number on it and three on the back. Yeah. That's the one. That's the one. It's like, <laughs> like smoking. <laughs> Right, took them while they're young. While while we have been all preoccupied mm. with cool things like Roman Risk, the world of gaming has been moving on apace. Mm. And now is that part of the show where Ben, in his true professional style, now that he's been unleashed from the dirty sex garage that he was trapped in for a week, oh, as he goes, as uh, he grins, look at that, look at, face. Look at that grin. That, 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 that's, a, that's a grin of a man that is that is free. Freedom. Freedom, Ben. Tell us what the Paint fuck face, happened in the news. Paint your face blue, Ben. <laughs> uh, so uh, the newest bit of news actually comes from uh, the guys at Fantasy Flight Games, and this is that there's going to be two new operatives added to Star Wars Legion. Uh, this is uh, Bosk, the bounty hunter that everyone will know, and also yeah. Sabine Wren, who some people might not know if you haven't followed the extended universe of Star Wars. Um, both of them come with some alternate poses, which is pretty cool, and Sabine Wren comes with an alternate head, which is something that I don't think we've actually seen in some of the um, mm. Star Wars Legion stuff up until this point, especially surrounding some of the characters. Um, both of them come with all so- sort of like their signature weapons as well. Uh, so Bosk has his RELB V10 mortar rifle, which is very synonymous with him. And uh, Sabine Ren actually comes with both either her blaster pistols or her dark saber, uh, which is the first Mandal- which was the weapon of the first Mandalorian who joined the Jedi Order way, way back in the day. And um, from that point on, it's passed to a whole bunch of different hands like Darth Maul and all kinds of things. But it finally ended up in the hands of Sabine Wren, who learnt how to use it from uh, another Jedi Master as well. So, yeah, some very, very cool characters looking to explore a lot more of the Clone Wars and those kind of animated shows that they did for Star Wars at the same time. And, uh, yeah, awesome to see some new operatives on the tabletop too. So. I love me bounty oh. hunters. I think the bounty hunters in Star Wars are just class. Not boss, though. He's a Trando scum. He's Trando scum isn't he, isn't he on the bridge where like Darth Vader's walking along top of Boba Fett? He's like cream of the crop. Boss, right forlorn, IG-88, <laughs> and, and IG-88. Yeah, He just has awkward toes that make it weird when he walks. Yeah, he's, he's probably Boba Fett's fluffer. He's not a fluffer. He's trans dudes. Yeah, yeah, I terrible. totally feel a Liam Neeson moment coming on right <laughs> now. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. I'm about to make an admission. I, I think they are... So much you so, are so wrong that I walked around level. for a week every with Oh, dude, no. <laughs> thinking about Mandalorian. No, so Warren. Thinking, no, no. It's like, but it's, <laughs> I don't care about Boba Fett. And I, I don't know what the what the obsession is. He had such a bit part in the movie. But he and then, cool. and then yeah. the, the, the fact that they then tried to retro write him into the prequels just made me go, Bleh. The best bounty hunter in the movies, though, was definitely Princess Leia. Boosh. No, when she got onto that, yeah, Bush. Oh, is that what that was called? Bush. 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 I think that costume ah. was class. Most exciting thing for this for me is Sabine. Yeah, because that's expanded universe, which they yeah. haven't done yet, mm-hmm. and because pretty much Disney went, we're going to ignore all the expanded stuff. Uh, it meant all of a sudden a lot of the fan favorites, things like Admiral Thrawn, uh, had gone away. So you'd lost, Thrawn. so you'd lost the the chests and all that. They're all in the Rebels cartoon. So the fact that they've gone, we're going to go to the Rebels and we're going to start digging stuff out there means that there's an awful lot more because we thought they'd probably be just focused on the the actual movie. Mm -hmm. Um, So for anybody who's wondering, Thrawn was a blue guy. He was was a a blue guy. He's a badass. He actually is um, a a tactical genius in warfare. And he he was the one dude who actually got to boss Darth Vader about more importantly, in, in all of the sort of backstory, he's one of the 
I think, one of the only aliens who made it up to the higher echelons of the Empire because they were very speciest. Yes. If you weren't human, you didn't get in. So yeah. the fact that he got right up there just showed how great he was. And it was like, everybody loves Liam him. Liam Neeson again, Justin. Yo, so okay. Everybody loves him. <laughs> so yeah, so all of that. Want to see yeah, more you'll, of that. For, you'll forgive us for having a chuckle when a fellow countryman makes an arse of himself in front of the world. But, you know, that's what we're born for here on the island of Ireland. So it's like <laughs> you, you do realise you're, you're going to get a phone call tonight and it's going to be Neeson and it's just going to be, I will find you yeah. and I will kill you. I have a unique set of skills that I've developed over the years. <laughs> Is it saying inappropriate Apologies things on camera? Apologies are not one of them. You know? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, Sleeping Gods, Ben. Um, what can you tell us about this? Yeah, sure. So this is a new game from Ryan Laukat, who's uh, done games like Near and Far and Above and Below, which are really nice sort of um, board games that also have like a storybook element to it as well. And their new game that he's working on with Red Raven Games, which is sort of the company he's been working with for a long time now, is for one to two players, where you take control of Captain Sophia Odessa and her crew, who have been transported into a slightly more fantastical world, and they're trying to find their way home. Now, the game itself is based as an, as an atlas game. So every single page of the book that you read through is a huge map, and you can choose to go to a whole bunch of different locations and explore them and encounter the different stories that appear there in order to try and find your way home. Uh, so as well as this Atlas book, you'll also get a book that's a little bit like a choose your own adventure one, where you'll find passages that you'll have to read out and make decisions and stuff. And this will all feed into like the ongoing story as it happens and the developing narrative. Um, so again, Ryan Lalkat has done some amazing stuff in the past, and this seems like a really nice refinement of all those kind of things he's done before. Basically taking just the storytelling <laughs> element of the games and bringing that to the tabletop, which I think is absolutely fantastic. The artwork that he always has for these games is superb. I know Lance and, uh, and his partner play um, Above and Below and Near and Far, and they really, really enjoy it. And I've got a friend who's really into this as well, so hopefully this is going to be one of those games that I can dive into. And the important thing, as I say, is it's solo or two-player. And the other cool thing, is that you don't have to have the same person with you each time you go and do it. So there's no like imp you know reason why you have to stick with the same person the entire time you're playing this game. You can swap it around and stuff as well, which is really really cool as well. So yeah, so Another it's awesome a prime. Game. So it's a prime opportunity to unsnag an army mm. um, if you find out that they're not very good at playing games in the first place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just go and get another normie. Yeah, yeah. we just get another normie. Okay, does, um, does your normie come with a warranty? I <laughs> love the concept of an atlas game. Mm. because I love maps mm. I think, that's, I think that's, that's basically what this is lots and lots of cool maps and story bo storybooks and stuff for you to delve through it's very cool I think you, you would imagine I, I imagine I'm not alone in that okay no. I'm alone in the Mandalorian hatred yeah very things, much but, so. but I would Irish. imagine I'm not alone in a love of maps I would surely think that every war gamer at least and certainly yeah. the vast majority of gamers are going to have a on for maps. Oh yeah. 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 Well, anytime you've seen campaigns running at local clubs and stuff, they always have to have a map. Yeah. Yes. How many times have you sat and put a tea bag over a bit of paper to make it all brown looking and yeah, you yeah, took yeah. a lighter and burnt the edges of it and stuff? Well, we were yeah. going, thought, going full I need a big hole right in the middle yeah. of it too. Yeah. Do you and remember you the summer the we spent teabagging? Where it was mm -hmm. the entire thing and we tried ovens. We tried um, to try and dry out the paper. The whole the whole summer too, too was spent trying to yeah. create the perfect parchment, and we tried coffee, tea bags, mm -hmm. uh, everything. Of course, we uh, just used stupid paper rather than getting good paper. We should do you know what? We could have bought, just bought <laughs> parchment paper. But parchment yeah. paper wasn't as easy to make as you would think. You know, especially when you're trying to use off cuts well, of wallpaper when and you're stuff a, like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> when you're a kid in deepest, darkest Northern Ireland. Yes. 20 years ago. Yeah. 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 The only thing we had uh, was all those tea bags. Would it not yeah. be closer to 30 years ago? Hey! So. Oh, yes, probably. Yeah, it would. It would. <laughs> 1990 was only 10 years ago. <laughs> no, <don't worry. laughs> okay, next up we have Justin, wait for it, man. Okay. This is it. This is the caverns of the Frog King, dude. Ooh, yeah, so this is from the guys at uh, Lucy Die who have done some amazing and stuff in the past with uh, the Red Book of the Elf King. They also designed the Toon Realms range, which is a whole bunch of different characters for people who want to play role-playing games and skirmish games. And it's kind of a, like a really nice sort of in inroad for us, sort of like young players and stuff, which I thought was really cool. I love the little mushroom men. Yeah, the truffles. <laughs> This is kind of going to turn into the mushroom oh, houses. <laughs> you remember the mushroom houses, Warren? Oh, 
it's okay. It's okay. Oh, I remember. Uh, Can't go in bed. Wait, wait. I'm, I'm getting a deja vu here. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what they've called their add your own adventure, uh, add your own engine adventure module. <laughs> so you can use this adventure and this story to play along with any role-playing game or skirmish game that you might have. And included within the book, you'll find a whole bunch of different suggestions. <laughs> So it's as easy as possible for a veteran DM to basically be able to look at their books and be able to... Uh, <coughs> oh, somebody fix this man's uh, internet! <laughs> you see that's that's the new story? Uh, with, with the truffles, that is the, um, that's the kind of like the basic big set for this, so that if you want all the different bits and pieces, you've got all the different characters and all the monsters that you're ever going to need to play this adventure. You just basically need some graph paper or something to play down and make a dungeon out of or, you know, use your own train and stuff coming. like that. Um, no. But yeah, as I say, this looks absolutely fantastic. You can just get the book by Deny. itself if you really want to. Uh, but yeah, it's an awesome little thing, and I think it's a great way to encourage a lot more people to try out role playing games for the first time. So absolutely, I'm mm. I'm, I'm, I'm sold. The truffles, <laughs> <laughs> the truffles have me. I want them. I want them all. I want a truffle army. Uh, I, yeah, but do, do you want the truffles? But do you also want the truffle boss? Oh God, yeah. Oh, well, yes. there's no point oh, having you, the truffles. You can't have the truffle, truffle boss. boss. No, truffle boss. You need kind kind of disappointed. There's not a lemmy winks to go with that frog. <laughs> Oh, that is so good. Yeah, it's um, definitely the the caverns of the frog king. Want to check out? Right. Um, <clears throat> the prize in this week's show hmm. is the Carrion Empires, the new two player starter set for Age of Sigmar. Um, ben, <laughs> there's not a lot to say about this other than it is the new two player starter set for for Age yeah. of Sigmar. Well, there are some additional things as well to this. So, as well as this being the new two, sort of two-player battle box for you to pick up, which has the new Skaven in it, and well, using some of their old models, and of course the new Flesh Eater Court. There's also two new characters in there that are entirely unique to the set. So, if you want to pick those up, you've got those in that box for you as well. It also comes with the rules and a booklet for playing through a little bit of a campaign using these miniatures too, which is something that's always nice to see when it comes to getting into a game for the first time. As well as the actual uh, announcement of the box, there's also uh, a couple of new battle tomes out. So, there's one for the Flesh Eater Court, and there's one for Skaven, so a lot of people who are Skaven players were really looking forward to a new book that's now out. Um, each of the armies also now has their own unique uh, terrain pieces, so you've got the Norholes for the, Ska uh, the Skaven and I believe it's called the Gore Throne or, or some kind of a, I, can't, I can't remember what the name of the throne is but there's a massive like vampire throne for the, uh, the Flesh Eater Court as well which is very very fitting. They also have new endless spells and there's all the accessories that you might have imagined coming out as part of the release of a new battle tome and a new army stuff as well so hopefully we'll see some interesting things happening with uh, both the, the, the Order of Death and, and uh, the, um, the, the sorry the Grand Alliance of Death and the Grand Alliance of Chaos with these maybe some new Skaven models in the future would be pretty nice to see as well uh, but yeah, very, very cool indeed, and obviously that's the competition prize for this show as well. So I quite like the look of the Skaven dice. I quite like the look of that terrain. I no. quite, that Skull of Thrones, <clears throat> or Throne of Skulls thing is... I, I quite like how they've gone, Bretonian players, we haven't forgot about you, we knew we killed your army, and... Uh, and we've just scattered it over all these bits of terrain. <laughs> <laughs> so, good, good luck playing this game again. Sprinkle shields all over it. Uh, there's one thing that comes in these sets that I always love, which is, you see the, the war scrolls? Yes. Having your war scrolls as just cards that you can hold instead of having yeah. to print off and write up army lists makes me happy. But sure, do they not come in the box whenever you buy uh, a unit or whatever? Yeah. Well, you get them in the instructions. Uh -huh. But it's, it's yeah, literally the part of the instructions. instructions. All right. So okay. if you're if you want to do it that way, you're literally carrying around books and books of instructions or, or cutting them out. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've I've actually uh, I got a game. Um, well, I've had a few games of Age of Sigmar recently with my and I got a game with my mate Marty. Ah, nice. So Marty is one of the one of the people behind the scenes that paints armies for us from mm -hmm. time to time. So if you've ever seen our Eldar in mm -hmm. action or on the table, uh, that was uh, that was one of Marty's. He also painted up. I think our Blood Angels, and he did uh, my huge. Did he? No, the Blood Angels orcs. was an in house, house one. Was it? Yeah, it was one of the very first ones that I did with you guys. Well, I. Oh, he did our Imperial Fist. That's the one. That's the ones. Yes, he did our Imperial Fist, and he did my huge Minotaur's army. Mm. But anyway, we don't care about any of that. I got a, a game of Age of Sigmar in with him, and I really, really enjoyed it. Which of I the factions is tempting you? <sighs> There's two factions that tempt me. Right. 
Um, uh, these days, I have to pick factions on how quickly they can be painted and how yeah. easily they can be painted. By John. By John. Yeah. Because I don't have the time. And believe it or not, John is now a busy guy too. Because you know, the, the rest of the organization and the community keep John very busy. <laughs> so I don't get much time to annoy him. Okay. Yeah. Terrible, really. So I was thinking too. My my absolute love is the night haunts because mm -hmm. I, I think the night haunts are just absolutely cool, and I love ghosties. I do, I've loved ghosties ever since I was a little tiny whippersnapper. Yeah. I think ghosties are the coolest thing ever. If I couldn't go with ghosties, mm. I would go with the tree men. I know that they're called Slytherin or Sylvaneth or something like that. There, yeah. to me, they will always be tree men. You mm. see, I know he has a love of ghosts because he bought a glow in the dark skull. Mm. And would hide it in my bed at night. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Totally. Brotherly love. Totally. Uh, and uh, didn't you guys used to like share a bunk bed and yeah. didn't wear and sleep beneath you? So and did you maybe up. not just hear Whoo! So like you'd be lying there and the skull would appear from the side. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when we were very, very young. This skull travelled all around with us as we moved house to house to house. But there was a, uh, one particular time we had uh, two beds on the ground mm -hmm. and there was a, a gap between the two beds <laughs> and then we'd be we'd be lying quietly getting ready to go to sleep next all you hear is thump roll 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 <laughs> and the glow in the dark skull skull was now under his bed and then i would i'd start going <laughs> and my poor lady started to cry and i feel i feel actually i feel i feel almost guilty now you know like, <laughs> but i love almost i love no. ghosties you see, it no, doesn't no. help that we'd probably watch darby o'gill and the little people <laughs> oh, well, oh yeah. you see full of ghosts. Yeah, that show love darby o'gill and the little people it's oh fantastic. come on and that is i will say that's where my love of the night haunts mm. actually comes from is is from those old mm. fashion views on what ghosts and, yeah. well, and, and, the, un, and the, the, the undead and stuff are like. I, I think it's fabulous. Well, I'll be honest, I'd be tempted by the Stormcast. So if you ever want to split Soul Wars. Yeah, we could do that. We could do that. If the, the reason I'm enjoying the Age of Sigmar is because it's so damn straightforward to play. Mm. There's, there's no thinking. Everything you need is on the card. Yep. And no thinking. Yeah, it's just no thinking. <laughs> just auto, auto, auto pilot wargaming. It'd be like a poster, you know, with one of the taglines. You, know, you think that has five no thinking. Empire. Until well, you have a battle board and you roll your dice and it tells you what you should do. <laughs> <laughs> but it, uh, when I say it has no thinking, let, let, me, let me quantify <coughs> that, right? I can think about winning the war. Mm -hmm. I'm not having to think about how to play the game. Yeah, makes sense. Okay. It's, it's a game that gets out of its own way. Cards, yeah. So it, it takes away the, the, whole, the, the whole aspect of trying to work out how to play the game. And I can just kind of throw myself into winning the war, you know, mm -hmm. winning the battle. Um, whereas, believe it or not, after all these years, I still can't memorize the the tables that are required to do the to do the hit the, to hits and to wounds in 40k oh it's very uh, simple it's super simple well, it was very simple it I might be know. super simple I, but I, i'm a dork and i can't i just can't get it into my head I, I don't know what it is now but you used to just have to work off seven so your ballistic skill away from seven told you what you needed on a dice so yeah, were, I, yeah that was it it's just seven minus yeah too, too much math. Too much math. Oh, no. Math hammer like the just, best hammer. I like just reading. Yeah, it, so. it, the current win thing is simple. If your strength and toughness is even, it's fours. If mine's greater than yours, it's three. If it's double, it's twos. Same on the reverse. Yeah, I've just went to sleep even just listening to that. Well, how's that any easier than roll this? Yeah, why doesn't the card just say to damage me roll a so figure higher than that? Yeah. On Age of Sigmar? It does. So there, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, a bonus, you know, it's, um, and the models are better in Age of Sigmar than 40k. Ha, Ooh, ha. There you go. Uh, there's war. There you go. That's two Liam Neesons yeah. I've done in one episode. Drop that. <laughs> Don't drop that. <laughs> um, let me ask you a question though, right? Mm -hmm. As starter sets go, mm -hmm. okay. It's kind of like your, your two player battle boxes go. What do you think about the fact? that it is basically vampires and rats. Mm -hmm. I'm fine would, with would they have been your would they have been your choice? Are they natural enemies though? Vampires. I, I would have are, they, are they not part of the same Grand Alliance Ben? No, because the Skaven are part of chaos and the Flesh Eater Court are part of death. So. Right. Yeah, so they, they are different factions. So this yeah. isn't a box so, that you can buy and just merge everything. I, I, believe, I, believe that, 
I believe that the idea is that the Skaven have found their way into like the Warrens and the cities that the Flesh Eater courts call home. So there's kind of like a sort of like a clash between the two there. Mm. Um, but it it's also interesting that they're looking more down like the sort of what would have been known back in the day as the Skyer or Skryer um, sort of section of the Skaven with their big huge machinery bits and pieces, yeah. and not down the sort of like massed like tied of fur that you'd normally associate with Skaven. Yeah, or all the Instead, they've switched it round and had the fleshy to court as the numerous one. The right and then had the Skaven as the big bulky ones. So Yeah. Who do you think are carrying the massive armor with twin guns? Oh yeah, sorry. Yo, it's um my bad. But yeah, it's interesting that they decided to go for what is ostensibly two evil armies, mm, regardless yeah. of where they fit in. Yeah, because it, it doesn't it doesn't have the the good versus evil kind of vibe. No, no. No, to be fair, they've done that before, but you have to go back to Warhammer. Well, no, they did it Fifth. recently as well with the the demons double pack. Yep, that's true. Yeah. In the in the forty k, I the think it's pack. corn demons versus slanesh demons. Mm-hmm. Was that a, a starter set with the rules and all that? Uh, yeah. No, no. Did it? No, 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 no. no. no Where's that's a starter yeah. set with the rules? Yeah, I think I'll the last time that. they did that was lizard men and bretonians. Right. For a Warhammer starter set, which would be two good armies, mm. yeah, but very di- you know different per se. But you know, uh-huh. at, most of the time they normally stick to good versus evil. Yeah, to it's, it's, it's just a, it's an interesting choice. Yeah. I'll be I'll be interested to see from a uh, from a recruitment perspective, you know, just what the what the uplift on on, mm. on that is. Is it going to be existing players looking at it and going, oh, it's a cheap way of getting? I'm going to buy into that. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's because I would hardly have ranked. And I love the Skaven models. I, I, I especially mm. the the more kind of technologically mm. kind of the giant gerbil wheel, esoteric, yeah, cool. uh, Skaven <laughs> doom wheels and stuff. Yeah, you know, because when somebody when somebody mentions like um, you know the they're doing terrain now specific to each faction, and I think of Skaven terrain. I just think of like a dirty drain pipe yeah. or something like that. You know, I don't think it, the terrain would be that difficult to manufacture, if I'm being honest. But I, I like that. Mm. You know, I like the models, but I wouldn't have I wouldn't have pegged Skaven as being you know, the most popular entry point um, into something like Age of Sigma. It just seems like a just surely, seems like a, an interesting choice. Surely they have to be looking at seals and picking it from that a wee bit. Maybe, maybe not. Or, I, I think it would have been fascinating to see them do something with two of the slightly more like fringe factions that they have. And so you would have had the Silverneth versus, uh, for example, the Kradron Overlord. So you've got the, these guys that are very heavily into their technology and then those that are more to do with nature and the sort of basic sort of powers of the earth and stuff in the mortal realms. That could be a, quite a fascinating uh, set. Yeah. Or the Fishmen. Oh, or the, the Fishmen. Yeah, the dip, Deepkin, yeah. Yeah, so. like the Fishmen are an amazing faction. Yeah. Oh, I'm not a fan. Do these um, fishmen? Oh, they're, 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 no, the fishmen. Like are, they, they all look like they they're swimming. And you're going. So this is a swimming army against a non-swimming army, not in water. What's no, no. going on here? No, no, Jerry. I, I'm I'm going to set you straight on this. Oh, you they can bring try. the ocean with them. Um, air is water. Right. <laughs> okay. Justin, let me explain this. Right. So there's a bit of background to this. Okay. Uh, so well, is it is it de <laughs> decom de- or well, de- you know constructed water or something? De- you, you know that I have absolute abject terror of flying. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, are you scared of swimming? Um. No. No, I'm not scared of swimming. Okay. Because he just bobs around. Yes. <laughs> <I've>, <laughs> I'm effectively, I'm effectively a, like a human manatee man. Yeah, I, I have no issues there. So It's like birds land on him. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to see you go, mine, mine, mine. So as part of my long running recovery process to try and uh, see if I could get over this fear of flying, mm-hmm. okay, um, I took flying lessons. Okay. Okay. Um, in a simulator. Oh, <laughs> not that and stupid. I, I, I didn't think you'd be fitting in a Cessna. Yeah. It's, <laughs> and as part of that, um, you, 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 you get to learn about the, the, the dynamics of flight and how flight actually works. Yeah. Okay. And the faster you go, mm-hmm. okay, the, the air effectively acts just like water. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So, um, if these guys are fluid moving dynamics, uh, yeah, fluid dynamics. So, if these guys, these Eldeneth Deepkin, are are moving fast enough and doing their thing, oh, they could they could have water like movements, but through the air. 
Doesn't explain why the fish aren't just flopping about. Just just brought magic right, water with they them. They do. They do bring their magical etheric sea with them, and do that's they? why they really? float. They so magical ocean. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Forget everything I've said. It's just magic. <laughs> It's just magic at the end it. of the day. Have you seen that new robotic thing, though, that uh, that travels out on, like... Yes. It's like, wibbly a, wibbly. A, it's like a flatworm. Yeah. It'll oh, travel yeah. in water on land yeah. uh, across Snow. any surface exactly the same way. So if yeah. it could go fast enough, it could probably fly then. Yes. Because it just yeah. wibbles well, through the, the water. The thing is, if it, anything goes fast enough and it's the right shape, yeah. it will fly. Mm. That's 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 fluid dynamics. Then that's what are you afraid of flying for? Like, if you fall out of a plane, you will effectively fly because you'll be like. Yeah, but it's not the, no, the no, flying no. that you're no. scared of. It's if the bit where you stop. Yeah, if you fall out of a plane, you will fall. Yeah. <laughs> but you'll fly for a little while. And, uh, again, it's not the fall that kills you. It's stopping at the end. Yes, it's it's, it's the harsh stop. But it's um, I I hate everything about it. I hate the I hate the height of it. I hate the noise of it. I hate the fa- the movement. You know, it's uh, the entire it's thing. It's funny, like, though. Oh. It's funny a man who doesn't like the idea of being in an aluminium tube up in the air would yeah. be so fond of being in an aluminium tube in a vacuum. In a vacuum? Yes, with your Hyperloop stuff. You seem, you seem oh, well yeah, taken yeah. with the Hyperloop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I'm well taken with the technology. I wouldn't say a <laughs> go on one. <laughs> <laughs> I would really like it. It actually looks quite cool. This is like my aunt. As a, just a complete digression because it's so rare we do them. Um, she had a daughter in Australia, terrified of flying, would not set foot on a plane. Australia is a terrible place to be oh, well, yeah. if you're afraid well, yeah. of flying. Well, yeah. and this is it. So my and Chrissy decided she would finally go and, and visit my cousin in Australia. It was going to be a six week, you know, sort of holiday. And she got on board the uh, the plane and they took off and they had a little bit of turbulence out of Dublin. Yeah. I know, a little old Catholic Irish lady. Out came the bottle of holy water from Lourdes <laughs> and she was... <laughs> Blessing the plane. So can you imagine being on this plane and like you hit a bit of turbulence and all of a sudden you're feeling drips on the back of your head and not knowing where they're coming from? You're giving it plenty to everybody. <laughs> God bless her. Well, there you go. There you go. It, it's, you're not alone. Um, we will, we will, I remember, I'll know what to take. You see, I, 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 it was balls of whiskey that I was using to try and uh, get across. I remember so. seeing you on a plane the last time you were on one and you were literally just clenching the hands yeah. Loud heavy metal just to try and distract yourself. Are you really going to go there after the scream you let out? Oh, yeah. I, I screamed like a girl on that one. He, <sighs> did. he did. It was very What was it? No, it was, <laughs> it was more like a Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, right. that was a rough land. <laughs> last, uh, last, uh, last story. So from the terrifying um, aircrafts, we can now finally come down to something that I actually really like. Mm. A man, do I like this. This is Black Sight Studios have done a massive modern ship. Ooh. Now, this thing is oh. modular. It comes apart, and we could play out all of our, um, what do you call it, like um, Rainbow Six kind of yeah. um, say, scenarios on this. I was going to say, if you remember the opening to Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Never forget it. Yeah. This is kind, basically a kind of ship that you could use that with, which back is very, when, very cool. Back when Call of Duty was good. Back when Call of Duty was good. Pay F to, press F to play respects. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, um, uh, well done, Justin. He bummed it up me. again. <laughs> Not me. Um, <clears throat> do you want to? Do you want to take a moment? Yeah. To fix give it? me a second. Right. Okay. Give me a Guys. Second. <laughs> and by the wonders of television. I fix the thing. Justin has it fixed. Our international distress call worked once again. Right, Justin, bring it up there. Alright, here we go. Now, can anybody remember what the hell we were saying? Call of Duty. Ships. Call yeah, of Duty. You're wanting to do Rainbow awesome. Six and Yeah, stuff show me that. some of the pictures, because it, it actually strips apart. Yes, there yeah. you go. So you've got some nice internal detail. I love the bulkheads. The bulkheads are lovely, aren't they? Yeah, and that's all we've got of it. Well, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> it is It is a great piece, though, yeah. isn't it? What do we think that is in size? Is that like two feet, three feet? Uh, it's it's well, four uh, foot. Like, four foot? Yeah, the whole width of you. Well, so there's like a 28 mil miniatures for yeah. scale. Yeah. 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 So that is your gaming table for so, that. So what you need is a four by four uh, C mat and put that <clears throat> diagonally in the middle of the mat. Yeah, yeah, and then you can have much. some wee dinghies coming up the side Which of it. Which we already have. Oh, uh-huh. you, could play, uh-huh. you could play some Halley Pirates. Yes. With the noise makers and stuff. I'm the captain now. I'm the captain. Yeah. <laughs> what would you What would you play on it then? Give Give me your most uh, weirdest thing that you would that you would play on. Well, it's not I, weird, I, but it's great. I would play some form of under siege. 
where I would get the ship's cook to be a Navy SEAL Steven Seagal fella <laughs> and just have, you know, have oh, all the regular nice. sailors being locked up as he just murders his way through all the terrorists. Um, what would you use to play that? 7TV? 7TV would be ideal for it. Yeah? Yeah. Justin? Um, hmm. What I would probably try and recreate Resident Evil. On a boat? There was, yeah, there was one of the movies, the end of it, was Alice trapped on a boat with a bunch of people that Umbrella had put into stasis. And what would you use to play it? Um, Spectre? Where, what minis would you use to play it? Oh, I'm sure I could go to Hassle Free and get what I need. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. there is a Mita Jogovic. Jogovic, style yeah. style. No, actually, studio miniatures do want to What about that. Fallout? Yeah. Any boats in, in Fallout? Uh, in Fallout 4, there's a sunken Chinese submarine, but it's probably not, not the same. Yeah. Okay. Lloydy? I'm thinking pirates because you could have the ship in the middle and you come in to assault the ship as the pirates and then you're playing as the crew Play and then the crew have to get to like panic rooms and stuff and then there's a second phase of the game where they're being rescued. What was the movie with Tom Hanks? Captain so Phillips got, was it? Yep. Yeah, yeah. So you've got that point of now. try to keep your crew purpose. alive God as the pirates it. take over the ship <laughs> and then you walk into phase two which is try to save the crew where, by assaulting the ship. Uh, maybe. I'd love it if they did a Titanic for this. I think it could look absolutely gorgeous. What? It's massive. <laughs> oh, well. Right. I would love it if these guys made the Titanic as a kit. Yes, like that wouldn't be a complete waste of their time. Not, right. Not <laughs> known for the massive wargaming <laughs> yeah, possibilities of the not Titanic. Exactly the, yeah. I'm just thinking it would make a cool model. Yeah. Yep. What? Follow Justin's advice. Is it wrong yeah. to want something big and beautiful to put on your mantelpiece? <laughs> right. I have two ideas that are kind of closely linked. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> there is a scene in Dracula where the body of Dracula comes ashore in basically an uncontrolled ghost ship. And then when they go onto the ghost ship, mm. there's all these dead bodies and stuff, and the captain is like tied to the way with a crucifix and hanging around his. Uh, his this arms is a Dracula movie. Yeah, yeah, I remember it. Mm. I think it's in the book as well, possibly. Yeah, we're not talking um, Dracula dead and loving it. No, 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 no. But obviously, I it's not a massive, like, modern ship like this. I see you're a man that likes the last word. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but I would like to take that style of thing. <clears throat> And have um, one vampire yeah. versus a crew. Hmm. I'm, I'm going to need to get you Dracula 3000. Same idea on a spaceship. Yeah. Well, uh, one, one vampire versus a crew. Yes. One vampire versus a crew. And it's kind of like a feeding frenzy. So it's like Alien. Yeah. Well, this is my next... Monster this, Hunt. Well, this was where I was going to next. If I can't do that... I think I would get the AVP miniatures mm -hmm. um, from the AVP game. Right. So, and uh, Predators versus Dracula? Well, uh, this is... <laughs> I think it's a comic oh, of that. Fucking hell. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Show's over, folks. We have hit rock bottom. <laughs> hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Predators <laughs> versus Dracula. <laughs> I guarantee you there is probably a comic book of it somewhere. Oh, my. Well, there's probably fan fiction of it somewhere, but you oh, know, no, Justin, neither not, here nor there. <laughs> not Predators versus Dracula. It's taking the concept of of Dracula as being an alien versus you. Oh God, shush, man! I <laughs> so, love it when I break it. <laughs> so what I would like to do is, um, you could either do the the, the almost like the Nostromo yes. kind of a thing, where, um, it, but what I'd be more inclined to do if I could, because I think it would be amazing. Mm -hmm is um, uh, you have a predator versus dry. You have a predator <laughs> on the boat, okay? And you take in um, an Arnie Sweaty Knickers <laughs> style <laughs> SWAT team. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And they come in on the dinghies. Yes. And they have to, uh, they have to get the insertion just right. Yeah. Okay. And then they take on the predator. You and and you have a full on recreation of predator. But on a boat. On a boat. You could maybe run. In a fact, you know what I'd, on this. I would have? I would have half the guys come in on the dinghies, mm. and I would have some of them abseil chopper out of the chopper. Uh, out of the chopper. 
I no, this is starting to get somewhere. Yeah. Or we could just play Spectre and, yeah, and just no, do the just do yeah. the whole special forces. Thing. You could also do something Cthulhu with this. Use this as the board for a group of role players. Let's say it again. Going into it. No, role players don't want boards. Hmm. Not for Cthulhu. Well, okay. No. Okay. Did, no. did Ben pen and paper? Did, we no, we haven't got ben, pen. Was, it, yeah. ben, what would you do with it, man? Uh, I'd use it a little bit. It's kind of like what Justin was suggesting there, but doing it in like a role-playing sense. And you mean predators versus Dracula? <laughs> so, I want to suck your blood. Why is it green? Uh, so Gamma World's like a role-play that was sort of like a spin-off of D&D 4th Edition, and it's existed before as well, but it's all about sort of like mutant heroes going off and doing dungeon delves where all the realities are clashing together. So you, you mean the turtles? Just fall into like a tear in space and time or something. Uh-huh. And so your heroes are running through the ship trying to take on like traditional D&D monsters wow. but in a natural modern scenario that could be kind of cool. That's so. pretty cool because I thought Ben was... I seriously thought Ben would come along and go like... Burrows and badgers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, oh, no, like cargo ship simulator or something. <laughs> Uh, oh, what, what was it? Cargo <laughs> Masters was that Kickstarter? If you want a bit of your Cthulhu feel, I tell you what would work very well on that ship. Bring that ship up once, once yes, more. Yes, 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 yes. I reckon that ship um, could pass for something in the 1930s, 1940s. You think an Achtung Cthulhu? No, I'm thinking um, that it wouldn't look too bad out of place in a game of Mythos. Mm. Ah, if actually, you yeah. You know, I don't think it's too far no. out from your... Uh, I, I can imagine ships like that, not unlike that, during the whole Nero Wolf kind of era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I don't think it would be too far away. So if you wanted to get a Cthulhu kind of miniatures game yeah. thing going, Mythos would be your would yeah. be your, your bet on that one. Yeah. It would work lovely on that. I was actually talking to those guys recently. I'm hearing rumblings they may be heading back to, to Kickstarter to add some new factions and new minis. It would Funny look days. cool covering yeah. tentacles and stuff. Wouldn't it? Yeah, With tentacles you could do. coming up yeah. and around it. Yeah, not eight tickles. Yeah, no, no right. Not eight we have UK Games Expo in with us. Yes. So uh, Kit and Tony joined me in the studio to actually give everybody a little bit of an overview of what you can see at the show. Hello, everybody, and welcome. I am joined by Kit and Tony from UK Games Expo, and today we're having a bit of a chat about the actual event. So what I want in this one is a bit of an overview for anybody who's been living under a rock and has never heard of this before. Also, if this is someone sharing this video with a family member who's maybe never been gaming before, give me the lowdown on... Let's start out, what is it? Okay, so UK Games Expo is um, the UK's largest hobby games convention. So just so that there's no confusion, that means pretty much everything that isn't a computer game. So this is about tabletop gaming. So we're talking role-playing games. We're talking miniature war games, collectible car games like uh, Magic, although other products are available, obviously. Um, Lightseeker guys over there. (laughs) And board games, uh, uh, of of which there is an enormous variety. Mm -hmm. So it's about that sort of tabletop gaming. In addition to that, we've got all sorts of other events around that sort of culture that that run through the show, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, UK Games Expo is held at the NEC mm-hmm. in Birmingham um, at the end of um, May. Uh, so it's May 31st to, was it May 30th to the 1st of June? Friday the 31st to um, the 2nd of June. That's why we got cake because I can't remember my own birthday, <laughs> never mind when we're running a show. <laughs> so <laughs> Kate comes along just to slap me on the side of the head so I know what day it is. Yeah, you guys basically take over like a section of Birmingham out by the airport in the NEC. Yes, we do. So we take the Metropolitan, the Metropole Hilton Hotel as well. So and two halls of the NEC this year. So it's about thirty thousand square meters of gaming goodness. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Which is probably why you have to run it over a few days. Yes. So we run it over three days: the Friday, the Saturday, the Sunday of the um, half term. Mm-hmm. So kids can come on the Friday. They haven't got to take any time off school. Yep. Um, so we, we run over those three days. We run from 9.30 in the morning. And the NEC part, the trade hall, where we've got over 400 traders we're expecting, mm-hmm. um, will run till about 6.30 on an evening. But you can then carry on gaming till midnight, 1, 2 in the morning. Mm-hmm. So basically you can game until you fall over. <laughs> 
I Please don't fall this. over. <laughs> I, I, I'll assume you have volunteers who are ready just to drag people into a corner. Oh, we have wheelbarrows and things. So, uh, and there's a lake outside, right, so we just you, tip them in. Didn't know you partnered up with a ladder dealership. <laughs> <laughs> we do have ambassadors to look after people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's let's talk a little bit about the history because the, the convention's been running for a good while now and every year it just gets bigger and better. Yes, so it's been running now for what? 11, 12 years. Mm. So I think this is the 12th the expo. 13th, yeah. 13th, <clears throat> 13th expo, yeah. like I said. Don't know when it is, don't know how long it's been going. <laughs> having fun. <laughs> yes, yes. It all merges into one. So it's been going now for 12 years. This is the 13th expo. Um, it started off just as a little local show, a couple of hundred people um, back in um, 2007, I think it was, round about then. And has been uh, and has just grown organically since then. We had about a thousand people the first time. Uh, this year we're expecting twenty five thousand or forty odd thousand people over three days. Wow! So um, if you have any interest in gaming or uh, family day out, anything like that, then UK Games Expo is not only sort of a great venue to come to, but also is great value for money. Yeah. Well, it's, it's one thing I adore about the show is just the absolute diversity that you have. There is something for everybody. And traders coming to the show and companies coming to the show, they always have nice, big, beautiful demo areas set up for people to come in, sit down and play. And that actually leads perfectly to the next uh, segment, which is accessibility, which I want to talk to Kate about. So for people coming for their first time, is it really easy for people to you know, get in and get stuck in and have fun? Yes, absolutely. So um, the big thing about the expo is we actually have a, a first timers guide. So if this is the first time you rock up, you don't know anything that's going on, you're actually given information as to what you can do, how you can get involved. Um, we also have a very big ambassadors program. So anyone in a light blue shirt will be able to help you, tell you where you need to go, see what's going on, listen to what you might want to play and then direct you accordingly. Now, this is if you rock up on the day. However, um, if you've pre-booked a ticket, um, then you can look on our social media, you can look on our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, sign up for our newsletter. Um, and all of this means that um, you can get a heads up on what's happening, mm -hmm. you can book tickets in advance, um, and it gives you a whole wealth of opportunity to see what's going on. Because the, the big thing we want is we want anyone to be able to come along and play games and enjoy the whole gaming atmosphere that's there. Doesn't matter if you've been playing for a bazillion years and know every rule and regulation back to front and, you know, preferred four and a half edition to eight or whatever it is, <laughs> or whether you've just turned up, your mate does gaming, you're not sure about it. Mm -hmm. We want it to be absolutely just as accessible to both sets of people. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're finding. And it's a wonderful mix. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, like, uh, on top of that, I've actually seen, you know, lots of like young families and stuff running about as well. So there, there's something for everybody. I know last year there was like a, a youngsters area. Yeah, we have a dedicated family zone um, where kids and uh, adults can learn to play together and interact together. Um, and Haber, who are a big oh, um, yes. kids uh, toys and games manufacturer and publisher, they are actually sponsoring that area for us. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a dedicated children's role playing game oh, really? uh, area as well, which is awesome. Um, I'm curious to see how that plays out, seeing Little Nepper's role playing. I'm very curious. As we said, when we, when we started, we had a couple of guys who came to us and said, we'd like to run a children's role-playing area. So that's really for the sort of six, seven-year-olds mm -hmm. up to about the 10, 11. Okay, so we're, we're, we're not talking adult kid. <laughs> no, no, no. So first of all, we, we had them, you know, checked for mental instability. <laughs> because I, I can't understand why anybody would want to spend a, with, with a table full of kids. It seems like an intense, long day to me. But these guys were very keen to do it, mm -hmm. and they produce specially written scenarios for the kids. Mm -hmm. And um, so it, it's, it's not a crash. The parents... Uh, there's space for them to sit around as well mm -hmm. so you know because as these are small children um you know they they can get stressed quite quickly so it's not yep. a case to drop and them off and then come back later yeah, and it's, it's a big event so yes yeah i mean so you know while, while we have lost children policy mm -hmm. uh, we don't really want to auction them off at the end of the day because <laughs> we want to go and have a beer so the children's role playing area, and that's grown from like one table, which just gets booked out almost immediately, really? to two, three, four tables. So now there's quite a large zone for that. And as uh, Kate said, we've got this family zone. Mm -hmm. And the idea of that is you come, and again, it's not a crash. This is about uh, 
playing together. Yes. Yeah. I mean, one of the, the mottos or the things that we're, we're looking at is life is better playing together. Mm -hmm. And so this will introduce you to a whole range of games that you can play as a family. Because mm -hmm. you know what it's like sometimes when you're playing with the kids, if you play a kid's game, it's dull as dishwater for the adults, yeah. Yeah? yeah, and you just trash them every time, and then they get upset. No, no, no. Apparently, that, that, that's, that's not how you're meant to play that game. Oh, well, I should have told my kids that. Did, did no one, have you never watched Star Wars? Let the wookie win. Let the wookie win. Yeah, but they're only little. They start like the Ewoks. See? Nobody lets the Ewoks win. Those things are frightening. They, they really are. But All the right. game, but the games that mm. we we teach and the um, imagination gaming, who run our family zone for mm. us, bring in. Are great for the whole family in other yeah. words adults and kids together mm. can have a great game yeah and i remember last year i saw you guys did some like super sized games as well that were brought out i think it was uh as money brought them in yes yes, yes they and do so I'd we love seeing things and one like of the that. one of the great things about those is that when both the adults and the kids sit down together everyone has oversized pieces in yeah. their hands so as far as the children are concerned the adults are in exactly the same thing so kind of psychologically it's like you're all playing exactly the same yeah, ex exactly. But it's it's that it's it's the breadth really of the mm -hmm. expo. So if you think about it, we've got live comedy shows. Yep. Yeah. So uh, Nightmare, the the old um, children's I remember role playing it. television program. I remember. I actually got to go to it before it was released. One of my buddies was in on the all right. Star. Oh, so good. <laughs> well, we have the live show of that. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Run by uh, some comedy guys. Uh, we have John Robinson, the Dark Room. And yeah. if you haven't seen John Robinson in the Dark Room, you haven't been insulted much. <laughs> This is so. true. Also, your name is Derek. Don't Darren. 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 Oh, my word. You're going to be in for a Twitter storm for that one. Yes. That's it. I That's... apologize sincerely. And well, I, I'm, get the feeling I have missed drama on the internet. Yes. <laughs> so uh, we've got tournaments. We've got the um, FFG, the Fantasy Flight Games, Nationals yeah. this year. Yeah. Um, there is just, I mean, one of the great things about Expo and gaming in general yeah. is while there's a huge trade where you can come and buy stuff, all of those traders will be running demonstrations of their games. You can go, you can play it, costs you nothing, and you can play in that hall all day. I guarantee it. All day, every day, mm -hmm. not spend a penny. They'll just let you play the games. And then if you find something you like, yeah. rather than a punt in the dark, you go, well, I've played this. It's a really great game, yep. and you can buy it. And that's what the Expo is about. It's about not just buying, it's about playing. Mm -hmm. You can then take it to the open gaming area mm -hmm. where we've got about, what, 2,500-ish seats? Just lots um, of seats. Where you can just then go and play the game. Yeah, I so. believe you have a board game library at the show as well. Oh, yes, Thirsty yeah. Meeples, the board games cafe in Oxford. If you're in Oxford, pop in and see the guys. They're mm -hmm. lovely. Um, they run our board games library. So in that, there's in fact, there's two board game libraries, ah. one at the Hilton mm -hmm. and one in the NEC, Where and those are the two places we have our open gaming zones. Mm -hmm. And between them, there's about 1,500 games you can borrow. Yeah. So all you do is you put a £10 deposit down, yep. you go, you can borrow games all weekend, play them, give them a go, and again, then just return them back, and at the end of the you know your, your time there, mm. hand back in, you'll get your £10 back, so it's cost you nothing. Um, and you know it's it's a great way to to play games. And the guys at Thirsty Meeples who run the board game library for us, great for advice as well. If you're not sure what to play, ask. And I think you know if we're going to give you, if it's the first time you've encountered the expo, the key giveaway here is, if you don't know, you can ask. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. The blue shirt ambassadors are there to to help you along. They're not just to show you where the toilets are, because actually there's great big signs with the toilet on. They will that. they will point at them for you if you can't see them. <laughs> but actually they're there to if you if you don't know what to do, a bit lost in it, mm. they're there to help you and go, yeah. right, what sort of thing would you like? Mm -hmm. What sort of thing is available? And they're there and they're specially trained to help you with that. Uh the traders are massively friendly people. Yeah. You know, they, you know, these these individuals are, uh, are are passionate about what they do and they create and want to talk to you about it. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not just there. We're just going to sell, 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 sell. Yeah. Well, the vibe I always get from the traders is, "Welcome to the world I've created. Would you like to yes. come and explore?" Absolutely. And it's like yes. they've got the keys to the magic kingdom, exactly. and instead of beating you with a bunch of stuff, they're opening the door and saying, "Here, do you want to try this?" Mm -hmm. And that's always the thing. Do you want to try this? Yeah, but that's that's got to be the aim of the whole thing. Is we want to introduce people to more games and new ways to interact with themselves, their friends, their family. Very much so. Everyone is looking for value for money in everything they do these days. Um, and in terms of social interaction and also in terms of um, 
just having fun together and levels and length of time of being able to play a game, mm -hmm. games are terrific for that. Because your initial investment, you'll get hours and hours and hours of play, especially as most games these days have got um, additions that you can do, different ways you can play it, different ways you can run the scenarios mm -hmm. within the game. Um, so there's a lot of good value for money just from playing games. And it's a huge social element. You can yeah. actually talk to somebody face yeah. to face. I, yes. I know that Instead might seem weird and strange, but yeah. And you don't get to scream at the at the screen, mm -hmm. and that's a good thing. You can actually talk to a person. And go, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I think, <laughs> You're I doing think, this. That's great. I think my expo is about, and I I know for myself and uh, Richard, my fellow director, who got stuck in Nuremberg, so couldn't be here today. Oh, he had his, trials getting at Nuremberg. His flight was cancelled. So he was slept in a cardboard box or something. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where he slept, but because uh, I didn't ask. I, I was simply <laughs> found an Airbnb of some sort. So, um, but uh, the reason the expo exists and we want it to exist is because we want to have two, three days where you can just come and have a good time. Yes. Yeah, and and that's the the key to it all mm. is look. We want you to come and have two, three days, one, two, three days, whatever you do, mm. where you're just having a good time. Where you know all of the stresses of flipping Brexit, no exit, <laughs> what's it? Forget all that. Backstops. Backstops. Yeah. <laughs> backstops. No backstop. You know, <laughs> all of that. We're just going to play some games mm. and have a good time. Meet some people. Yeah. Um. You know and. And just have new experiences, mm -hmm. and th I mean that's that's key for us. So everything that we do is really designed to give people a good time, stress-free time, yeah. to to make sure that you know we don't get in your way, if nothing else. Because sometimes you go to some of these things, and it seems everything's designed for them. Yeah. And we really try and design things uh, for the people coming, so because we want them to have a good time. Yeah. And if, if, if at the end of the weekend they go, I had a great time, uh, met some great people, mm -hmm. played some great games, then that's, you know, tick the box, job done. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, let's say this video is well at their appetites. Where can they go to find out more information? What sort of avenues and options do they have? Um, so the best bet is um, is go to the website. That's uh, gamesexpo.co.uk. Um, we have an awful lot of every possible type of question you might ask or might want to know mm. about the expo already on there. Um, you can buy tickets through the website. When you log in, it will give you all of your information on there. Um, you can subscribe to the newsletter. That will send you information. You can tick your preferences as what you want to know about, what you want to hear about, how often you want to be emailed. Yep. All of these things are on the website, so it makes it accessible to everybody. Yeah, if there's something particular you want, the newsletter is very useful. Yes, um, and we do a, a, a digest as well, which oh. is which is a great thing. So, because there's so much, yeah. if you sign up for everything, you know, and you just get a load of yeah. stuff. So the digest effectively is a summary. Mm -hmm. um, of of the newsletters in the various categories, so you get an overview sort of once a week of of what's going on, yeah. uh, and that's the best way. That if you're waiting for something to be released, like uh, one of the comedy shows, mm -hmm. or a particular tournament, or a yes. set of tickets, or just want to know generally what's coming and what's being released at the show. That's a great way of uh, of doing that. Yeah. Facebook again is, is great, but it tends to scroll away and you and you lose it. Yes. Yeah, the, yeah, tracking stuff out of Facebook can be a bit of a yeah. pain in the butt. And as we get closer to um, the expo, the amount of stuff that we're releasing and, mm -hmm. and telling you about means that, that that goes quite quickly, doesn't it? Yeah, Kate? very much so. So it's a case of if you happen to be on the the Facebook feed and looking for things like that, then we usually try and give you a heads up that something is coming out. So we yeah. might do a countdown. We might say it's going to be. Really released on this date, um, all of these things to try and give everyone a chance to, to get on and see what they yeah. want to do. And another thing to help you with your experience of the Expo is we have an app. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you go to the Google Play Store or... The Apple Store. The Apple the Store. Apple store. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, no, this is an me, argument. I'm, I'm loving the ally. <laughs> Oh dear. That's two years, one year. Yeah, right, <laughs> Yes, yes, but it, it only takes me 15 minutes to release an, an Android app and takes me three days to release the Apple version. <laughs> so it just yeah. stresses my head. But whatever, <laughs> you can go and get the app, and what that will give you is all sorts of things. So all of your tickets, etc. If you want to, when you want to collect your tickets at the show, that has a little collect tickets button. You get scanned at the show, and out come all of your tickets. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's got all of the games etc in there in a, in a schedule so you can actually add that to your own little personal list of what you're going to do at the weekend um, if you've got stuff in the bring and buy we have the uh, I think probably and somebody can challenge me on this and yeah. I don't mind <laughs> we think we've got the world's biggest bring and buy I was in there last yeah. year it was bedlam it's immense it, it is it is chaos incorporated but they, they really know what they're doing in there yeah but uh, we have if you've got stuff you're selling in the bring and buy, mm. this will keep track for you so you ah. don't have to keep sticking your nose in and making the queues bigger. So yeah. basically my phone will go ping. I'll look at it and go, oh, I've sold that. I can go grab the money and buy another game. Yep. No. Well. No? no. It won't ping you. <laughs> oh. Okay. Because uh, that will just be annoying. So <laughs> what it will do is when you look at tap your bring and buy button, it will give you the current Ah. status it'll go and query it at that point well yeah. so still i can look at it and go okay so that that and that's all i can then go pick up that that and that that's right you can then that's go exactly and cash, partially right. cash out get the money go and buy some more stuff <laughs> ready for next year's bring and buy <laughs> <laughs> so the the app uh, um uh, it's it's a free app um it's a great way of of just giving you a, a better experience the hall maps as we get closer will be loaded into that yeah and all the exhibitors as well are all listed in there yeah and they're stand numbers so just gives you a, a, a better experience much easier way of finding people things items games yeah so and you can vote on the awards yes you can yes well. yes oh. you can so if uh, the uh, uk games expo awards mm -hmm. of which this year we know there are going to be an awful lot, lot. Um, I nearly got snowed under with packages the other day as the deadline approached for the, the first deadline for yes. the awards. Oh, so yeah. like, is this people sending in yes. the copies? So there were about 80, games. 90 games literally arrived. Wow. Just stacks up. So it was just every delivery driver for every different yeah. DPD, yeah. UPS, <laughs> were just coming through the door. That, that one poor guy from Royal Mail just dragging a sack. <laughs> and to a lot of people, they go, oh, man, look at all these new games. But it comes to a point where you go, no, nah, I can't. I can't get in the office now. Can't process. Can't process. <laughs> can't find my desk. <laughs> so I'm then shouting on the phone at Pat, who, who uh, adjudicates our awards and all. Yeah. The, get in here and get, get, these, <laughs> get these games out to the judges. But yeah. you, have, we have the judges award and the people's award. Mm. So the judges awards are being worked on now. So the judges will be going through those games and they'll score them, yeah. and that will then be released at the award ceremony on Sunday. Mm -hmm. But during the show, a short list of three games in each category mm -hmm. you can vote for on the app. Yeah. And so it's a great way of, of going and playing a few of those games yeah. and then uh, putting your vote in. Yeah, putting yeah. your accolade toward the games you love. Absolutely. Um, and the wonderful thing is that you have very small publishers alongside very large publishers. Yes. So the range is, is incredible for that kind of thing. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, that'll do us for the overview, I think. Cool. <laughs> uh, I do want to drill down deeper into some of the other aspects of the event. So we will be coming back with more videos. So we will move on. Get your comments in below. Tell us what you think of UK Games Expo. What are you looking forward to see? And we will move on and we will see you again soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. You know, Expo is one of those shows that I absolutely love going to just for the vibe that you get from it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's such a welcoming show. And I don't know, it's, it's, I don't know how to describe it properly. It's just so different from any other show I go to in a year. You so say you love it? Absolutely. <laughs> Good. Because I've got news for you. Oh. Okay. What you got? The, the team that we're going to be taking to Expo this year yes. is too large. Okay. So we don't have enough rooms to go about. Oh. But the Vikings, the Vikings of the show have stepped up and they've got a tent, Justin. Okay. Just for me? Yep. And you will be... Do, do, do I have full Viking clubber waiting on me? Uh, for a while, you might. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that it's me. You're sharing with Olaf and Ragnar, and um, you're going to you're going to have the time of your life, my friend. Do it, I at least it, get mead first? Uh, meat? Mead. Oh, mead. Yes. <laughs> I'm not going to stay with Vikings if they're not feeding me mead. That you, they will feed you the meat. Don't you worry. Yeah, mead. Uh, mead. So, Duh. yeah, they, they will feed you. You will be you will be grand. So, I'm very much looking forward to setting up a, a live stream of uh, Justin's Viking adventures. Uh, what, watch out for the, what is it, that live on the lake there? I assume we're not allowed to eat them. If the it's Queen's a, allowed if to it's eat a them. swan, only the Queen of England is allowed to eat a swan. Really? Yes. Correct, we're not allowed to touch them, because every swan in the land belongs to Her Majesty. Apparently they're not very nice to eat anyway. So I've heard. Yeah, we didn't lose out, man. Okay. Don't, don't worry. Tastes a lot like gold. I don't know, but now I've been told I'm not allowed to, I kind of want to more. 
Well, there's plenty of them out in the river. Isn't that the big problem, though? You're told you're not allowed to do something and you want two more? Sorry, Justin, I'll sort you out later, man. Just, I've got a stash. Don't you worry. (laughs) Oh, so that's what happened to the ones in the river. Kickstarters. And we're going to kick off with one I'm actually really in love with. This is the Tenfold Dungeon, which is a dungeon in a box. In a box. Out of a box. Um, It's basically like a Russian doll of dungeons. I know a whole pile of dungeon rooms that all fit inside each other, and you just cart around a box, and you open the box, and it look, look, yeah. this Ta-da. is what it does. It just comes out into a dungeon. Now, what is extra special about this is those lovely plastic doors yep. that clip your dungeon together, and they have other lots of nice bits and pieces of plastic on there as well. I think it's genius. I can't understand why it's never been done before. I heard you um, like boxes, so we put some boxes in your boxes. Yes, and now it's a look dungeon. It. Makes no. perfect sense, yeah. doesn't it? it? It is a really cool idea yeah, when you think yeah. about it. So, um, yeah, Ben, what can you tell us about it? Yeah, so this is from the guys at Room 17 Games. Uh, as you say, it's these like dungeons within boxes within boxes. It's very, very awesome. If you haven't seen it in action, you can go and check out the uh, sort of uh, the D&D session we did with the guys from Room 17 Games, which was uh, based on one of the modules they've put as part of this Kickstarter, which is very, very cool. You can go and download that. Uh, but yeah, they've been working on their basic sort of like castle format, but they've also got uh, ideas for a temple. And also there's like a sci-fi facility as well. And as they look towards the sort of completion of the Kickstarter and looking over to so they've also got the facility in there as well. So you've got something there that's kind of like a little bit of a sci-fi aspect of things, which is pretty, pretty awesome indeed. And they've also been working towards some things, hopefully when they get to their stretch goals, where they're looking to add some more 3D elements to the game board. Um, so you've got things like lights and ad- additional styles of doors, which I thought was really, really cool as well. And they're also looking towards doing other bits and pieces to go alongside it as well. Um, but yeah, it's a fascinating concept, great for DMs who really want to have like a dungeon in a box that they can take with them. And because of that kind of modular nature where you can swap it around and put everything next to everything in very very different configurations it means that every time you sit down to use the same set it's always going to be slightly different which i think is really really good so yeah that the fact i just like the portability of it yeah. mm. i like yeah. the fact that it, it's a very portable uh, thing it's all in the box heck you could put, probably put a bit of foam in there and chuck your minis into that box as <laughs> well yeah, yeah i, I actually um, quite like it because i remember whenever i used to play fourth edition uh my dm he always had this big massive bag of just different game tiles and it was such a mess and such a hassle to hunt through and find the bits you want that yeah yeah no i i love the idea of you arriving <coughs> in the box pull out a couple of pieces of foam with uh, which have your minis in it mm-hmm. throw out the things drop in the doors and off you bang go. away uh, away you go oh. and it, it's you know it, it's, it's nice no, it's, it's atmospheric it's, it's the no-brainer of it it's just, isn't it the, yeah the there's something bits. really convenient about that i can't wait well, for no. the unboxing <laughs> of this box <laughs> they also do a town Look at this. Oh, you do towns. Yeah, so you've got yes. buildings in there. Yeah. And when, yeah, you turn, when you turn them upside down, they're the outside. And whenever you turn them the right way up, it's the inside. Oh, That's ho, ho. really clever. So it means you can have really nice things like steps and balconies and all kinds of things set up if you do your interiors of your castles and the outdoors as well, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. So, I like the idea of that, especially because it means you're getting the flat surface on the outside to actually set miniatures on top if you're playing something like Carnivale. Yeah. Because that, that was one thing I always wanted, was just more flat surfaces for things to run and jump and leap from. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a, it's a, it's a cool cool concept. It's got 24 days to go. Um, if you're interested in a nice, simple, fast uh, dungeon experience, mm-hmm. Tenfold Dungeon um, is it, it's a unique idea. I haven't seen it before, and I would love mm-hmm. to. I'd love to see the guys make a success of that. Okay, next up we have Zone Raiders by Feral Basilisk Studios. Ben. Mm-hmm. So yes, yeah, so this is the uh, brainchild of a guy called Tony Shao, and this is a open model system campaign skirmish game that allows you to play with as many different sci-fi models as you like, brought down into this world that is meant to be very fluid and cinematic. So they've taken some cues from existing games that already exist out there, like Carnivale, which has got this really nice fluid movement system to it, as you'll know from some of our gameplay uh, videos and stuff like that. This game has that kind of thing to it, so there's lots of parkour, zipping around, leaping off buildings, running through jungles and inside facilities and over the top of them as well and it's got really dynamic combat built into it at the same time there are seven distinct factions but obviously because it's an open model system you can take any of the different ranges that you want out there and plug them into each of these different factions as you see fit the cool thing about that is the, the artwork for the game is so 
broad but deep in a way. Mm. So it allows you to, it basically covers everything in the sci-fi spectrum, looking at stuff that's very, very familiar to a lot of people and also some stuff that's very, very esoteric. So if you've got models from very different ranges, you can still bring them together in some way and use them in the game, which I thought was really cool. Uh, it's got team-based play to it, which is very cool. Everything's based around the idea of between six to 12 miniatures. It's also got solo play and cooperative as well. So if you want to delve into the game and play it by yourself or with another person against an AI-controlled enemy, you got that uh, sort of going for you as well there too. Uh, they've actually uh, put together a little bit of a sort of like a free PDF as part of the Kickstarter that you can go and have a look at and download and play through one of the introductory missions using whatever models you have in your collection. Uh, but they've also got some aspects of the rules on there as well if you want to go and look at it in a bit more depth. Um, but it, when, as it, when it comes to sci-fi skirmish games, this one sounds absolutely amazing. And I love the idea of a game that's basically just all about the rules and then shoot whatever miniatures you've got in your collection. So yeah, very yeah, Is it nice. not the type of thing that we're... Many ranges go to die in in something like that though you know it's um especially in the sci fi uh, the sci fi range where they're all so tightly themed like what are you going to do you're going to take your old wizards of the coast star wars minis and put them up against a t forty three well, I, th I think that, 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 as I say, the key aspect is that when you're looking at the sort of uh, the artwork for the world, it gives you a sort of a, like a vague idea of exactly how that faction works and looks within that world. So you'll try and buy miniatures that fit into that. Yeah. So even if your miniatures come from different ranges, they're still going to kind of be around the same aesthetic, which I think is really cool. Because um, obviously we've seen a lot of people using stuff from the guys that uh, Infinite, the guys that Corpus Belly for Infinity and stuff in this game, which I thought was a really good idea. And there's also loads of other miniature ranges out there as well. Um, like, but but are you not going to look at your minis and go uh, i don't know unless you went to somewhere like hassle free or, or one of these places that do great collections mm. of you, kind of generic i don't want to say generic because they're designed beautifully yeah, and they're yeah. full of basically miniature rangers without games. agnostic yeah. agnostic is a, is a great word they're yeah. agnostic miniature rangers because if somebody rocked up with their infinity minis i'd be looking at them going their infinity minis yeah. you know it's um i i, I find it hard to yeah. detach myself there are a few games like this where they're not tied to a specific line now so you've got this and there's uh rogue stars ospreys sort of sci-fi priestly's fantasy book as well um, yeah um, and the idea is, if you've got a range kicking around that you're not doing anything with, and the likes of Hassle Free is a prime example. Yeah. Hassle Free do a very nice um, SG1 team, <clears throat> and there's no game for Stargate SG1 kicking around currently. No. But being able to pull those in with some other miniatures that look like they could be sort of Goel or uh, Jafar sort of figures, and and doing your own SG game would be great. It will it will live or die on the actual mechanics. What, That's uh, the what, key what here, makes isn't this it? more interesting than playing <clears throat> Infinity with yeah. your Infinity figures? Because otherwise there are miniature ranges out there and even for old dead games I have bundles sitting about the house and it's just a case of I never really got into the game but I picked up the miniatures because I like the miniatures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But having a game that had a unique or interesting set of rules attached to it that I could go, well I've got X number of whatever happens to be raging heroes of a ton of toughest girls in the galaxy models yes. from the first time around, and they are stunning sculpts. And I picked them up solely because I went, they're really nice sculpts. I want to do something with those. <laughs> you know, like, and that's that's it. It's just the other thing it gives you to do though is it's not necessarily you've just picked up minis that the game's died for. Hmm. <clears throat> you've maybe found yourself in a situation where you've got well, I've got four or five of them and two or three of them, they look pretty similar, I'll put them together yeah. in your bits box, but you don't have a, a whole army to flesh out. Mm -hmm. And it gives you permission then to mm, just go, go nuts. do you know what, we're just going to play wherever we want, because you know, I have this rule book, and if you have that rule book, we both know we're of the mindset of, yeah, we don't well, really care. It is, it is one of the things, you know, this, this kind of project lives or dies on the quality of the mechanics. Yeah. Well, look at Two Fat Lardies. They yeah. only produce rule books, and they produce yeah. great rule system. Yeah, well, and that's and, what and they treat that on. That is why something like this is worth checking out because you could find that uh, you and your buddies love this rule set. Yeah, because two fight lordies are are living proof mm, of that. It works. Yeah, and the fact that Rick Priestley has done the the, the same thing with the, the yeah. new fantasy book. Yeah, you know it, yeah. it's uh, there is a place for it. <coughs> yeah. Um, but but, but it, 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 it depends. Needs unique, it though. needs to be good. It needs yeah. to be with done. the PDF being there, people can go and check this out and see if it grabs them. But I can understand go. this. Um, mm. the, it, like some miniature ranges are just so popular and tied to their game that it would feel weird. Yeah. Like mm. if you took 40k miniatures and put it into this, is this going to feel a bit weird? And I got your Star Wars reference there because it's such a well-known. Well, that's Star Wars yeah. sort of IP. Whereas you do, like you guys have talked about, you get so many other 
maybe Kickstarters and things where there's been a bunch of minis released. Yep. Maybe the game hasn't quite taken off. Yeah. So I get your point. They're not typecast. I get yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're I get not your point about Yeah. It, 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 I think something like this would be brilliant for uh, minis that that don't have a typecast yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, effect to them. Definitely. Where you idea. can suspend your disbelief and just let the minis be what they want to be mm -hmm. uh, in the thing. Yeah, I was just going to say. I was just going to say as well. It also comes down to this idea that it opens up the hobby for a lot of people. Like, if you come to this game and you've got sort of like a whole bunch of different things that you want to try and bring together to create a crew to play in this game, suddenly you're you know you're bit bashing and kit bashing and all that kind of thing as well. So you've got that aspect of things coming together here as well. Which mm. is well, I mean, like for for this, you you wouldn't maybe even have to bother with the actual world or the backstory for this yeah. game. You could just say this is a great mechanical system. I'm going to write my own backstory for my stuff and just mm -hmm. use it as a framework to lay out my own stories on the tabletop. Well, tell us what you think in the comments, guys. Remember, this week we are giving away the Carrion Empire for Age of Sigmar. To be in with the chance of winning it, post your comment. Make sure you're subscribed. Click that little bell. Mm -hmm. It really does help us get the content out to you. Otherwise, YouTube just does not deliver it whatsoever. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, uh, write a letter. Tell someone about it. <laughs> Snag an army. Write your yeah. MP. And if you want to know if you're the winner of the Reichbusters Painted Sarge... Yeah, one of a kind, painted by Seb Levine. Painted by Seb Levine himself. Come across to uh, on tabletop.com or beastofwar.com. Either will work. And click on the Claim a Prize. Uh, you'll need a free account. Make sure you have a free account. Click in there and the name of the winner will be listed in there and you'll be able to claim your prize. And this man, who is actually burning through the prize claims at I, the I, moment... I have been working on it. I found some downtime. So uh, if you've been waiting for a prize, check your email, check your spam folder, just in case it gets knocked into there. And that one's coming directly from us. So uh, Justin will throw in a pair of his pants with it as well. So for why? Times. Also right. make sure and check out his Facebook stream. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for, for full entertainment. <laughs> right, uh, remember the, the, the end of the world is nigh. If you want to survive, all you have to do is pay £3.79 a month, join Backstage, support the project. Come along tomorrow morning as I discuss important life-saving stuff with my buddy Justin, my best friend, the only man in the world that I would share an apocalypse with. If you want to be in on that, you know what to do. Thank you to Jerry. Thank you to Justin. Thank you to Ben. Thank you to Brother Lloyd. You have been watching The Weekender, and we've been enjoying you. Have a great week of gaming. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now and be sure to check out beastofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.